Hello friends, this video on P block elements part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more PA from exam. Let's talk more about carbon. Carbon is the first element of group 14. The first is always special. It exhibits catenations, a very, very critical property with carbon. And that's why we have the whole organic chemistry we have uh, because of the catenation property. It makes so many compounds. It is the seventh uh, most abundant element on the earth. It is the second most abundant in the human body. In human body also we have a good amount of carbon. In carbon only S and P orbitals are available for bonding. And that's why it accumulates only four pairs of electron. And on the you will never find carbon with seven chlorine or carbon with six chlorine. Not possible. Only at the max four. Why? Because it has only four pairs of uh, S and P orbitals are there. So it can have only four pairs of electrons around it. Right. So there are some allotropes of carbon, one is the crystalline and the other is amorphous. So in crystalline we have diamond, we have graphite which is used in pencils, and then we have fullerenes which is uh, recently found. And then amorphous allotropes we have coal, we have charcoal which we generally get by burning wood or something. Uh, then we have lamp black, so whether if you have a candle and you burn this you will find some lamp black here. Right? It's very, very, it's a pure form of carbon actually. When you, burn or let's suppose kerosene or something and then uh, you burn something which has very good amount of carbon uh, and then you collect that uh, carbon then you get lamp black it's a very very pure form of carbon let's start with graphite first see graphite is something which we use in our day to day life for example in pencils also we have graphite in batteries also we have a graphite uh, there so and this is the structure of graphite. In graphite, if you see, it's a layered structure. If you see the layer, the layer, layer one, layer two, layer three, and they are held by a Van der Waal force. You see, there's a Van der Waal force, and the distance between the two layers is 340 picometers. We talk about the bond length of the carbon here. It is 141.5 picometer. Carbon carbon bond length is 141.5 picometer, right? And each layer, if you see, is composed of hexagonal ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is a hexagonal ring with carbon carbon length that is 141.5 picometer. And if you see each carbon in this will go undergo sp2 hybridization. Each carbon goes sp2 hybridization, right? And it makes three sigma bond with three neighboring carbon atoms. And the fourth forms a pi bond. Example, if you see here, right, there is one, two, and three. So this carbon atom is bonded to Three other carbon atoms. That's why it is sp2 hybridization. Correct? Right? One, two, and three. So if you see in carbon, there are four electrons. Right? So one, two, and three are used to form bond with these carbons. And the fourth one, if you see, is used to form a pi bond. It's a double bond actually. It's a double bond actually. Right? Why? Right? It's a pi bond actually. It forms a pi bond. Right? So three forms three sigma bonds, and the fourth electron forms a pi bond. Correct? Right? It undergoes sp2 hybridization and these are the electrons are delocalized over the whole sheet. you see the electrons are delocalized there are free electrons also here and that's why you see it conducts electricity it slips actually it slip from here to here right and the electrons are mobile if you see and that's why it's a good conductor of electricity and that's why it is using battery and also if you see there are as i told these are weak van der Waal force so these bond can easily break and it's very soft and slippery. You see these guys slips over each other. I'll show you one animation in the next two slides where I'll show that these layers slips over each other. And this reason graphite is used as a lubricant, dry lubricant where the machines run at a very high temperature. See the machine is running at very high temperature. If you use a normal lubricant, uh, the mobile and all which you use normally in, in vehicles that will burn because the it, the normal lubricant won't withstand such a high temperature, it will burn. So in that case, graphite is used. The graphite can withstand high temperature because the typical structure it has, it's, uh, it can withstand high structure, uh, high temperature and also it is uh, slippery, right? So it can act as lubricant. So graphite is a very critical use of graphite. Uh, the machine which run at very high temperature, there we can't use the normal lubricant because the temperature is very high and thus we use graphite as the lubricant. Right? And please note, graphite is the most stable allotropes of carbon. This question is asked a lot of time. 
what is the most stable of the tropes of carbon that is graphite because i'm talking about thermodynamically this is the most stable very 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 high melting and boiling point so thermodynamically even it is uh, better than thymine and it is also used to make crucibles crucibles why crucibles because of very high melting points crucibles are what they are container which is used to melt metal for example if i want to melt a uh, iron i can't use a uh, uh, i can't use uh, aluminum or steel uh, utensil right in that case i need a very high temperature the utensil it will burn so i need a utensil which can withstand very high temperature right because let's suppose here i go want to uh, melt gold or i want to melt aluminum so in that case i need something some container which can withstand very high temperature and there we use graphite because graphite can withstand high temperature so it is also used to make crucibles correct Let's talk about the second electrode that is diamond. It, it, diamond you must have seen in your life. It, a lot of jewelries are uh, made out of diamond. It is a very shiny metal, very hard metal. Uh, sorry, very hard. Uh, it's non-metal actually. Very hard electrode of carbon. You see, it has crystalline lattice. It has crystalline lattice. You see, this is the structure of diamond here. If you see, it's all crystalline, right? And each carbon undergoes sp3 hybridization. If you see, one carbon is linked to one, two, three, four carbon atoms, right? So it is all. sp3 hybridization all through a sigma bond there is no pi bond because if you see one carbon has 1 2 3 4 electrons and each of these undergoes uh, each of these are linked here right so if you see it, it forms a very cage like structure if you see this one three dimensional structure this is nothing but a two dimensional view but this is a three dimensional view it it forms a very very big strong net strong structure and that's why diamond is so hard because all the carbons are bonded there's no free carbons here right there's no free carbons all the carbons are bonded In case of diamond, you see there were three bonding, and the other was free to make pi bond, and that was the one which was causing electrons to move, and thereby that was it was a good conductor of electricity. But in this case, all these uh, electrons are bonded. There is no free electron, and thus, if you see, it is not even good conductor of electricity. It's very very strong because the shape. You see, each carbon is bonded to one, two, three, four, right? Each carbon is bonded to four carbon atoms. Very very strong structure. It's, it's sp3 hybridized because Uh, one carbon is linked to four carbon atoms, right? And it's tetrahedral in fashion. You see, it's all tetrahedral structure. You see this this carbon actually, right? This carbon. If you see, this is tetrahedral in structure. You see here also, this is tetrahedral in structure, right? So all are tetrahedral in structure, and this is the look and feel of diamond. It's very very strong because of the structure. Please understand three dimensional structure. It's very strong because it 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 goes on actually. It goes on. It, it doesn't stop uh, in this. Uh, What you call cube, it goes on. It, it creates a very big mammoth three-dimensional structure, and that's why it is so hard. Correct? You see, diamond is covalent, yet it is very hard. Why? As I told, right? Carbon forms a covalent compound, and I also told that covalent compounds are generally soft. But this is not the case with diamond. It's very hard. Why? Because as I told, as far as the hardness is concerned, we also talk about the structure. So in this, in case of diamond, the structure is such a way that all the carbons are linked. And they have formed a gigantic three-dimensional structure, so it is very hard. It is also very common question in exams that asks that diamond is covalent, yet it is very hard as substance. The answer is that it is covalent, yes, but the structure is so concrete that it is it is forming a mammoth three-dimensional structure that it is very hard. Right? Like, it is very hard, so it is used for uh, making. Uh, uh, it is very. It, it has very good shine, so it is used for making jewelry. It is very hard, so it is also used for. Uh, Uh, making uh, glass cutting uh, tools because it it can cut glass. It's very hard. That it uh, it is also used for sharpening hard tools also, right? And as I told, diamond is very costly and graphite is very cheap. But the graphite can be converted to diamond. We can do it. We can do it in the lab. So why still there is so much difference in the price for diamond and graphite? Because it takes huge pressure and temperature to convert. Graphite diamond, but actually we can do because graphite and diamond, if you see, both has carbon and its as its constituents. So if you put a huge pressure, huge temperature, then you get diamond out of graphite. But it's very uh, difficult to produce. But this actually uh, technically feasible and and it is proven actually. Uh, the chemists have converted the graphite to diamond in the labs, but it takes huge money to do that, and that's why this conversion doesn't take place so often. But it is possible actually, and the way the diamond is formed off in the earth. Because of the huge pressure, the earth crust diamond is formed. So to form diamond, you need huge pressure and temperature. 
but in the lab if somehow we can provide huge temperature and pressure you can actually convert graphite to diamond. So let's talk about the third allotrope is called fullerenes and this is also made by converting uh, or heating graphite actually in the electric arc in the presence of inert gas helium or other. This is a man-made actually this is not uh, naturally occurring. We recently found actually uh, this uh, allotropes and this has this uh, saucer ball like shape and actually it is very it is liquid in shape. And they are the only pure form because they have smooth structure without having any dangling bonds. And they have cage like molecules, they don't see 60 molecules shaped like a social ball. It's called Buck Minister of Fury. This is in the name of the honor of a scientist who has made this, uh, it's an architect actually, uh, who has made this kind of shape in one of the buildings, so which, which is similar to this shape. So this is uh, named after his uh, name, Buck Minister Fulrin. And if you see it's the liquid in shape because this is all the structure of fullerene. The another fullerene will be also something like this. There won't be any link. It will be uh, like this. No, one big lump, one big lump, one big lump. It won't be a big mammoth cage-like structure as we have in graphite and diamond, right? And that's why if you see, it is liquid. But in graphite and diamond, if you see the same bond extends, right? The same bond extends. But in case of fullerene, this is the maximum it can have. The other Fullerene will have again this kind of shape. The other fullerene will also have this kind of shape, right? Like this, cage-like shape. But there won't be any connection between this and this fullerene. So, though, so it exists in the liquid form. Hope you understand why it is a liquid form, but the graphite in diamond is a solid form because graphite in diamond forms a mammoth structure. But in this case, this structure is limited to 60 carbons. Only 60 carbons take part in this structure. And the next structure will be again 60 carbons and these will be independent. So it will have flexibility to move and it will be liquid in shape. Let's talk more about the field rings. It, cons it consists of 26 membered rings and 12 5 membered rings. So it is 26 membered rings and 12 5 membered rings. So if you see, I'll show you a 6 membered ring. So 6 membered ring I can show you is here. 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry, this is 5. This is five membered ring, so I'll draw in red, five membered ring. And I'll draw a six membered ring in another color. So let me draw in green. So if you see six membered ring, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I drew in green. Right? So it has 20 actually six membered ring, 20 rings like this, and it has 12 five membered ring, the one in the red color. This is it has 60 carbon atoms actually. Now all these atoms goes through sp2 hybridization. If you see all these carbon is linked to three other carbon atoms. If you see any other carbon atoms here, it is linked to three other carbon atoms. So it is all the carbon atoms goes through sp2 hybridization. Please note this is critical here because all the carbon atoms is linked to three other carbon atoms. If you take any carbon atom is linked to three other carbon atoms. So all are sp2 hybridized. Right? So if it is sp2 hybridized, they have three sigma bonds. And what about the another carbon? Because carbon has four electrons, right? So three are used to create three sigma bonds and the fourth one if you see the fourth electron which we have this is delocalized in the orbitals and this gives aromatic character to the molecule. Correct because they are delocalized and this gives aromatic. You will understand more of this statement when you learn organic chemistry we will we'll focus more on this where we understand what this statement means. The only thing you understand is that in case of graphite if you see the other carbon atom which was there, the extra was forming a pi bond there, right? I told 3 sigma and 1 pi. In diamond, all sigma because they were forming 4 bonds. But in this, there are 3 sigma, the other one is not forming pi, but pi bond, but it is delocalized. It is delocalized in the orbitals and it gives the aromatic character to the molecule. This is understand the difference. In graphite, this is graphite. Graphite also sp2 hybridization, 3 electrons were used, 3 sigma bonds. The other was used to create a pi bond. In carb in diamond, this is diamond. This is diamond. Sp3 hybridization was used. All each carbon atom was linked to four other carbon atoms, so it was very hard. In this case, each carbon atom is linked to three carbon atoms. The fourth electron is used is actually delocalized and uh, in the molecular orbital, and that is used to give a aromatic character to this molecule. Right? And the shape of this molecule is has 60 vertices. If you count the number of vertices. There are 60 vertices 
because there are 60 carbon atoms, there has to be 60 vertices, right? So each vertex is occupied by one carbon atom. And if you see, it has both single and double bonds. So some are single bonds, some are double bonds. So for the single bond, my length is 143.5, for double bond, 138.3. So they are single bonds and they are double bonds in this whole structure. So this is all about fullerene. Let's discuss diamond and graphite once again. So if, as I told, right, the, in, in diamond, each undergoes sp3 hybridization and here each undergoes sp2 hybridization. So if you see, each carbon here is linked to 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon atoms in diamond. This is diamond. And this is graphite actually on the uh, let me write. This is diamond and this is graphite. Correct. So in this diamond, if you see each carbon atom is linked to four carbon atoms. SP3 hybridization is very strong and this is a very mammoth structure. In graphite, each carbon atom, if you see, is linked to three carbon atoms only, right? If you see one, two, and three. Each carbon atom is linked to only three carbon atoms. And this is sp2 hybridized. And they are sleepy. If you see, these are the weak vulnerable ports actually between these two layers and they sleep over each other. But in this case, there is no vulnerable force coming into play. It's very, very strong. And this is sleepy because these layers sleep. And that's why it is used as a lubricant. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.